Good day and welcome to part 2 of the chapter on Regional Economic Integration. Can regional integration truly benefit the whole world as these economic alliances aim for prosperity among its members? Will the formation of international trade blocks inhibit trade and globalization? Let us find out. Let us take a look at prominent economic regions that have achieved integration, namely the European Union, the NAFTA, the ASEAN, and the regional integrations in Latin America. Let us study their accomplishments and challenges. The European Union, this is the most highly evolved integrated economy as it has reached the fourth stage of integration. That is economic and monetary union. It began as a trade community, the European Coal and Steel Community, and was later formalized under both the Treaty of Rome and the Maastricht Treaty. Previously named the EEC or the European Economic Community, it was renamed the European Union in 1992. The euro became the common currency also in that year. The euro has strengthened to be the most preferred foreign reserve deposit currency. The EU is currently challenged by the foreign debts of some of its member country states like Greece and Spain. A requirement of EU membership is a stable economy and a low foreign debt to GDP ratio. Greece has a high unemployment rate and has defaulted on its foreign debts. Many EU member states were discouraged from trading with Greece because of its poor fiscal management and lack of transparency. Greece soon required bailout from the European Central Bank, which is the Bank of the European Union, and also from other international banks. The most challenging issue to date is the exit of Great Britain from the EU, also called Brexit. The United Kingdom is a valuable trading partner and its membership has benefited the EU a lot. Many migrants from all over Europe were able to find jobs in Britain, but at the same time, the increase of overseas workers became an important issue for many British citizens who voted in a referendum favoring separation from the European Union. Despite these issues, it is undeniable that the EU has transformed the economies of many member nations for the better, as seen in this table showing the rising annual GDP per capita of European countries. The North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, was a treaty signed by the United States, Canada, and Mexico. It was the world's largest free trade agreement when it was established on January 1, 1994. Its major objectives are as follows. The NAFTA as an integrated economy is so natural. The proximity of the borders of Canada, Mexico, allowed each country to cultivate the large market of the United States. The United States gained concessions and was able to purchase or produce goods at lower cost. For example, the NAFTA is primarily the reason why cars are so affordable in the United States, providing low taxes for cars manufactured in NAFTA countries. It also ruled that 65% of car components be made in NAFTA countries thus boosting employment in the auto manufacturing sector. This graph shows how the U.S. and Canada's GDP per capita gradually improved because of the NAFTA. A prevalent issue, however, is that it seems that Mexico could not reap the benefits of the trade agreement. Still, we cannot deny the positive effect of the United States on both NAFTA members. 
being its largest source of imported goods, second only to China. One of the world's remarkable integrated economies is the ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Formed in 1967, the ASEAN founding member states were Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. The association promoted political, economic, and social stability in the Asia-Pacific region. The ASEAN objectives are as follows. Today, the ASEAN has grown to 11 members, now including Brunei, Myanmar, Cambodia, Timor-Leste, Laos, and Vietnam. The outward-looking economic policies of the ASEAN attracted the attention of many countries, and foreign direct investment continued to flow into the region. Perhaps testament to the importance of the region is the regular participation of the United States and China in the ASEAN summit. The interest of the two world powers also highlights the territorial dispute in the West Philippine Sea, a major sea lane Many recognize the issue to be the tipping point of world power. The ASEAN represents a region that have not seen any major conflict since the Vietnam War, a factor of stability. The success of the ASEAN is reflected in the rising GDP per capita of the member countries, most especially the founding members. The South American continent also has a handful of integrated economies, the Latin American Free Trade Association or LAFTA, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru created the Andean Group in 1969, the Treaty of Asuncion in 1991 created the Southern Cone Common Market or MERCOSUR among Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, and Uruguay. And then in 2005, the DR CAFTA, the Dominican Republic and Central American Free Trade Agreement, became effective. Compared to the above mentioned, however, these integrated economies were a different story. The unstable political and economic situation of Venezuela, Bolivia, Argentina, stunted the growth of the region. Venezuela's inflation rate was unprecedented in the region, prompting a migrant crisis, also social turmoil in Bolivia due to political instability turned away foreign investments. Also, Argentina is still experiencing one of the longest recessions in the world, a Nobel Prize economist once said that there are four types of economies in the world, developed, underdeveloped, Japan, and Argentina. These are just some of the issues that integration in South America cannot easily solve. The COVID-19 pandemic has aggravated the situation, and now perhaps these countries are yet to face its most difficult economic challenges ahead. Please review the important terminologies of this chapter. That ends the chapter on regional integration. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.